Right now, attorneys for former President Donald Trump are defending their client in a Georgia courtroom. They're trying to get the charges against him thrown out on First Amendment grounds. CNN's Nick Valencia joins us now from outside the courthouse. Nick, what's going on inside that courtroom? Well, Dana, we've yet to hear from the former president's attorneys, but that is expected to happen any moment now. It's worth noting that Trump is not in court today, but this is the first time that we're going to hear from his criminal defense attorneys in this case. And as you mentioned, we expect them to try to get this indictment thrown out on First Amendment grounds. What his criminal defense attorney, Stephen Sadow, argues is that when Trump, after he lost in 2020, when he was peddling conspiracy theories and making claims of widespread voter fraud in the 2020 election, that at its core it was political speech protected by the First Amendment. Sadow wrote in a legal filing that the remedy for false speech and lies told by the president is not a criminal indictment by the Fulton County District Attorney's Office. Now, we should mention that First Amendment challenges have, uh, you know, been made before and have failed in this case. Uh, past former, or I should say former co-defendants in this case, Ken Chesborough, Sidney Powell, they tried First Amendment challenges as well. You remember they took plea deals with the Fulton County District Attorney's Office. Uh, they are now going to testify potentially against the former president in any future trials. But what the presiding judge in this case said is that the facts and evidence first need to be established in court before those First Amendment challenges can be made. Those uh, challenges are going to start any moment now. Dana. Okay, Nick Valencia, thank you so much for that reporting. We're following two big legal developments that affect former President Trump. Uh, he was just handed a major setback in a federal appeals court. This was a three-judge panel ruling that Trump is not protected by presidential immunity when it comes to being sued over things related to January 6th. Yeah, and in Atlanta right now, Trump's lawyers are about to appear in court to defend him for the first time in the racketeering case that's tied to 2020 election interference in Georgia. They're trying to get that felony case dismissed. CNN chief legal affairs correspondent Paula Reed and CNN reporter Zach Cohen are here to discuss. Also with us, courts correspondent for Lawfare, Anna Bauer. Thanks all for being with us. Zach, first, talk to us about what's been happening inside the courtroom today. Yeah, guys, if hearing from Trump's lawyers for the first time is sort of the main event of today, the Warm Up Act has been one of the lawyers for his fellow co defendant also charged in this case, and that is David Schaefer. He was the top fake elector in Georgia, and he's accused of organizing essentially all these fake electors to sign those certificates and sending them to Congress. And Schaefer's attorney is essentially arguing that there were no fake electors because they weren't fake, they were contingent electors, and that really they were just on standby because Donald Trump was still, you know, trying to fight this out in court. Now, if that sounds familiar, it, it's because it is. We've heard this before from the same attorney who argued this same point in federal appeals court when she was trying to get Schaefer's case moved to federal court unsuccessfully. Now, the, ju the federal judge was not having this argument, and it'll be interesting to see if the Georgia judge maybe is a little bit more receptive to it. But, you know, we're still waiting to see the main event, like I said, Donald Trump's attorneys to make their debut in Fulton County. And we're actually watching one of his attorneys right now. Let's listen in. Uh, indictment alone is sufficient, and I think that's what Hall indicates. And I'd ask you to reconsider that particular part of the order. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Skidow. Uh, let's, why don't we go ahead and begin with the state's argument, and we'll see where we land. I know we had some other counsels stepping in at 130 around there. But maybe, Mr. Wooten, if you're taking this argument, we can pick it up right there okay. with the Hall case, which was not one any party raised at the outset, uh, but it certainly seems on point on this issue. Judge, I just would request um, to be able to screen share. I don't think I've got the... Um, uh, you, you, yeah. Point. All right, so we need Mr. Wooten out of this madman. <clears throat> we will keep an eye on what is happening here in this Fulton County courtroom uh, as we talk about what is happening today. Anna, to you, one of the arguments from Trump's lawyers, one of whom we just heard from, is that he's protected by the First Amendment. But the charges, of course, go well beyond just speech. They have uh, to do with a lot of action. And this judge has already rejected similar arguments from co-defendants. 
Right, you're very right. He has rejected similar arguments from co-defendants that uh, 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 those arguments arose with Sidney Powell and Ken Chesbro, if folks recall. Uh, and Judge McAfee rejected those arguments. He said basically that the First Amendment claims were not ripe, meaning that you know there needed to be more factual development. And and if folks were just listening to J Judge McAfee just now, uh, he mentioned this case called Hall. That is a new case that Trump's attorney. Have have raised in their own arguments. They're trying to get McAfee to reconsider his reasoning that he raised in the Chesbro and and Powell denial of the, those First Amendment claims based on this new case. So it remains to be seen whether he will do so. But even if McAfee decides that that now you know in light of this new case that that he can look at these First Amendment arguments, I still think that it's a very slim chance that Trump will succeed here. Uh, as you mentioned, Brianna, the, the First Amendment, although it is robust, uh, it does not protect uh, inducement to fraud, which is, is one of the charges that is involved here that's been brought against Trump and others. So, for example, uh, inducing the fake electors to make claims that were, that were false in terms of representing themselves as the legitimate electors from the state of Georgia, those are things that would not fall within the protections of the First Amendment. So I think even if McAfee says, okay, I can't rule on the merits of this First Amendment claim, I'm very doubtful that Trump will succeed. Not the only development for right. Trump in court today, because Paula, there was an appeals court ruling earlier in the day that Zach uh, kind of alluded to. Walk us through that. This is a big one. We've been waiting for this decision for a long time. Here, the Court of Appeals uh, concluded that Trump can be sued for his actions on January 6th. Now, they're not saying that he's liable. What this means is that Capitol Hill police officers, lawmakers, others who have sued Trump related to January 6th, they can have their day in court because Trump and his lawyers had previously argued he couldn't even be sued, that he enjoyed immunity, protection uh, that all federal officials enjoy when they are conducting their official duties. He argued that, look, I was president, I was acting in my official capacity, so I can't be sued. But here the Court of Appeals found that no, in fact, you were at a pro-Trump rally and acting as what they described as an office seeker, not an office holder. So here they're drawing a line between your official conduct uh, as the president or someone who is campaigning. And they said, quote, in the opinion, I want to quote here, they said, when he acts in an unofficial private capacity, he is subject to civil suits just like any other private citizen. Now, Trump has uh, reacted through his spokesman, Stephen Chung, saying, quote, the facts fully show that on January 6th, President Trump was acting on behalf of the American people, carrying out his duties as president. Now, the big question here is what does this mean uh, in a criminal context? Because we know that he is likely going to try a similar argument. While this was about civil suits uh, in the criminal context, and he goes to trial here in Washington, D.C. in March related to election subversion and January 6th, we don't really have any definitive answer on immunity in the criminal context. But here you have a court of appeals saying that not everything you do while in office is protected. So not good news for the former president. Trying to make this a First Amendment issue is the goal to try to get this to go to the Supreme Court. And is that likely? That's usually always the goal with a former president, right? If you yeah. lose, just keep kicking it up uh, to that court. He, that he, wants, he wants to take it to his friends who are not always his friends not on always the Supreme his, Court. Not the always way. his friends. And, and you know, when you come to something like this, either the First Amendment argument or this with, with immunity, these are a lot of really fascinating constitutional questions, uh, really right for Supreme Court review. But it's unclear uh, how willing this court is going to be to wade into these big questions that could potentially have an impact uh, on the outcome of the election. Paula, Zach, Anna, thank you so much to all of you. We appreciate the discussion.